So even though lockdown rules have kind of been loosened in the UK, we still don't have wheels here on the Isle of Sheppey. So I haven't been out exploring or shooting any photos really this past week. But I am going out for a sunset walk. It's like an hour and a half until sunset and I'm gonna go try to do something I don't think I've ever done. I'm gonna go try to take bird pictures. So if you're not familiar with UK geography, or actually probably even if you are, you might not know where the Isle of Sheppey is, so I'm gonna overlay a Google Maps. Essentially, we're like southeast here in the UK, and it is an island, the Isle of Sheppey. No, it's not the fanciest place on Earth, but it is really nice. We're right next to the sea. There's like really cool canals along here, and there is space to get out and walk around, and it has been like a really, near perfect place to be locked down. But it is kind of lacking like some really, really good photography locations. But what it does have is lots of birds. Along the canals, we always see birds and it's kind of what I want to focus on, but I don't have much time. It's like I said, about an hour and a half until sunset. And I think we're just gonna head up here a little bit farther towards the canal where I, I spotted some swans the other day and hopefully they're still there. So we've just seen a sign, and yes, Jody's with me back there that says, yeah, there's the babies. Okay, so um, we've just seen a sign that says nesting swans, and I see a swan here, and some baby swans. So I'm gonna get low and quiet, and get my camera out, and see if I can get some photos without disturbing them. 100 to 400. Yeah, we'll see if we can make a photo without getting attacked by a mama swan. I lay okay, so there's only one baby and the mama that I can see, and it seems ridiculous and feels ridiculous because I'm in a field with like people walking past, laying on my stomach taking photos of this swan. But with wildlife photography, it's so important to get to the eye level of the animal, even if that eye level is on the ground. It gives you a proper perspective of the animal, it gives you the opportunity to get some foreground blur, and it just makes a much more powerful image. So I am uh, being ridiculous, <laughs> laying on the grass, and yeah, as I say this, probably talking too loud, the swans just walked away. So I might go uh, wander and see if I can find another perspective of them. Okay, so I'm hiding in the grass and I've got a perfect line straight down the canal and the swans are feeding. Looks like there's two babies and two adults. And unfortunately, they're kind of like lingering around a different spot feeding and not, they've stopped moving this way. But if they do come this way, I think it's gonna look really nice, but they definitely have to move a little bit farther this way. I've only got 400 millimeters and I could probably use about 600 right now. So need them to move or I need to move again. This is harder than it should be. The swans have moved down another canal passage. I don't know how I can get to there, if I can get there, but I'm gonna walk around this field and try to find an angle. Elusive, elusive. I 
I'm in a pretty bad spot for photos, but I'm right next to the two swans and the two babies. The one's really apprehensive of me being here, but they're starting to get more comfortable with me. And every now and then the chicks get a little bit closer. So I don't have a great perspective because I'd like to be right on the water, like right at water level. And I can't get there in this, like, uh, in this mud without actually physically going in the water. So it's not, it's not great for the photos, but hopefully eventually they start to get a little bit more comfortable with me and come a little bit closer. I mean, I am wearing camouflage. That was awesome actually. Um, they're still right there, but they started to get really, really comfortable with me and actually got right in front of me, actually probably too close. I still don't have the right angle. I, I really like to get really low to, to wildlife, to their eye level or lower. I like to get right on the water level and there's just not anywhere uh, to do that right here. So. I might actually try to go a little bit closer up the canal now that I think they're pretty comfortable with me and see if I can get a different angle. Yeah, I'm having so, so much fun. Yeah, Backlight is hard, um, as is this shooting position, but it'll always be my favorite type of light for wildlife photography. Backlight creates an atmosphere, a warmth. It creates a, a key light that shines around the animal if done right. And I finally have some here with the swans, but they're not really behaving. They're not really, oh, oh I'm getting old. They're not really posing um, here for me. So it's been a bit of a battle. I feel like I've shot a thousand photos and not one has turned out. But yeah, that's how it goes sometimes with bird photography or wildlife photography. Sometimes you just take hundreds of images and, and nothing comes out. So I think, I've, uh, I think I'm done with the swans for now. And I, I might just like go for a bit more of a walk and see if I can find any other birds or maybe some rabbits or, or anything really. So let's go explore. Let the morning sun come to your rescue I'll see it through Out your window, you're going somewhere new <laughs> I think I should just title this video Photos Taken From Laying On Grass um, I found a, like a savanna style tree like you almost kind of expect to see an elephant under it here in this uh, in these flats and there's this beautiful cloud above it so I'm taking a photo and I might actually come back to this at sunset although it works already but I'm taking it on the RP which I'm filming with and I'm just getting low to create not to create a perspective but basically to cut out the background and minimize this photo as much as I can and I'm just gonna shoot this this beautiful cloud in the background See it through. And I you know you've been in isolation too long when you start happily taking photos of cows.
Are British cows mean? Why are you guys all coming up to me? I don't have food and that's a fence. <laughs> I remember Thomas Heaton once told me a story. We were talking about the scariest wildlife encounters we had in the field and I was talking about lions and leopards and wildebeest and buffalo and bears and he goes, one time a cow chased me and I laughed. But now I get it, these cows are kind of mean. I think I'm gonna go to the beach. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna make it to the beach, which is actually just right there. Um, but the sun's already right on the horizon. Instead, I'm gonna head back towards the main path. And when Jody and I come walking here, quite often, we see wild rabbits roaming about. Uh, no rabbits, I think probably there's too many dogs out walking this time of night, there is a lot of dogs. <laughs> and I've just done something silly. I saw what I thought was a cormorant standing on a tree log out on the other side of this inlet here. And so I walked all the way around and now <laughs> as I'm approaching it, I, I actually think it's like a carving of a bird on a, on a piece of wood. So stupid. But as I was saying last video, just getting out and taking photos has been so incredible today. I've absolutely loved every minute of it. People say all the time it's hard to take photos from home. It is, but half the battle is just getting out. As soon as you get outside and you start seeing some things, that inspiration comes and you have fun with it. So just get out if you can legally. And uh, I actually see this boat here. Maybe a cool long exposure. I might try that and leave you guys with that, but I don't think it's gonna be very good. So I'm gonna show you this cormorant. I'm gonna show you the photo of this boat long exposure that I don't think is gonna work. And I'm calling this an episode. Peace.